And our first discussion is insider threat current events. Now, we're going to continue that with uh, Dr. Paul Losowitz, our senior scientist at Quantarium. He'll be representing a summary and roundup of critical infrastructure protection perspectives on current insider threat events. We've been involved with some recent work with George Mason University in this area, and Paul and Dr. Mark Troutman are currently in, at a uh, work in progress stage with some of this stuff, but they've agreed to come up and Paul's gonna talk through some ideas and content. <clears throat> now Paul comes to Quantarian from quite a, quite a career. It spans technology areas and continents, as well as we have some great discussion topics, but I think you'd expect that from somebody who's got a PhD in cognitive science. And I think that on the drive up with uh, Taz Daughtry, they had an extended discussion of, I think, the Peloponnesian War and Thucydides and all sorts of interest, Hume, all just amazing stuff. So anyway, uh, Paul, you're up. Thanks a lot. Good afternoon. I'm not very good to uh, uh, stand in one spot, so I might take this thing here. Uh, thank you. It's hard to see me behind the podium. Now, I'm not going to take uh, the full heat for the content on this. The, I am second author on this because my Mark Troutman, who was supposedly delivering this, was called away on a family excursion. So uh, he is now somewhere in the Caribbean, uh, parts unknown. So I'm delivering this for him with minor editing. Okay. Overview, we're going to talk a little bit about a few re uh, current events, uh, technology increases uh, that are causing uh, higher risks from insider threat, uh, government resource constraints, uh, pr primarily DOD uh, constraints, but they extend across the entire uh, U.S. government and probably local governments as well. Uh, costs incurred, uh, we're going to look at a couple of different perspectives on costs incurred for failure of due diligence to protect yourself from insider threats. Some interesting uh, costs that aren't necessarily monetizable or not easily monetizable. And implications and policy responses. Now I'll give you some background information. The uh, cybersecurity, uh, the Critical Infrastructure Protection Institute uh, at uh, George Mason University uh, had, does a lot of work in policy. And so we're going to address some of those policy concerns here in this paper as well. Well, uh, uh, no one can ad uh, ad admit that this hasn't been a delightful uh, year for insider threats. I have to admit that uh, I go and uh, Google the private Manning and Snowden uh, uh, debacles daily. Uh, and as I, I guess many of you do as well. Private Manning has now officially apologized uh, to the U.S. government and to all of the U.S. Uh, citizens for having done what he has done and incurring a 90-year sentence or potentially 90-year sentence. Uh, Snowden is uh, still not materialized somewhere in Russia. Uh, Snowden did have classified access due to his status as a contractor as well as uh, because of his ex experience that he gained uh, as a sysadmin access to a number of different systems and capabilities. Uh, I did in fact in talk to uh, a, an employee of the company that did his background check. Interestingly enough, uh, OMB dictates exactly what you can ask a uh, prospective uh, uh, recipient of a security clearance. You cannot deviate from that. Uh, if, you're, if your recipient comes in uh, dressed in flip-flop shades and smoking a joint and answers the questions correctly, it's the answers to the questions that get conveyed up to OMB. No other side channel information is conveyed. Uh, one interesting thing that came out of that discussion. He was employed under contract by uh, Booz Allen Hamilton and uh, because of previous experience was able to work himself into a, a uh, position of uh, access uh, with BAH. 
Now, I talked about some questions about the background check. Uh, the company that I had discussions with uh, did not want to divulge any further information than if I was not, in fact, a, uh, an officially designated investigator. They wanted to refer me to their public affairs office. And so I didn't get much more information out on that one. So contrary to what, uh, and I'm trying to remember who it was, was uh, contrary, yes, to your statement before, we have, we have evidence that Snowden did, in fact, have malice aforethought with respect to his employment at NSA. Uh, that has come out to, in public. So it, it's entirely possible that, yes, a, a further or additional background uh, investigation may have uncovered something with respect to his interests and motivations. Okay, summary. Uh, the government agency depended upon uh, contract employees not only to do the investigations uh, of the background of the individual employed, but that the individual employed uh, was then hired after just a short period of time was able to engage in uh, his malicious activities. Now, what technology trends are coming ahead uh, that make our insider threat problematic even more so? Computing capacity continues to increase while embedded systems proliferate. Now, no one yet has yet brought up the technical issue of the Internet of Things. But as a matter of fact, all of the concerns that we've now voiced about SCADA systems uh, can be generalized uh, through a whole plethora of access methodologies that are coming down the pike. And I know you probably have seen the Cisco commercial about how I can drive across town, uh, cutting through all the lights based on the system's knowledge that I need to get where I'm going faster because I have an emergency. That's the kind of embedded ubiquitous computing capability that we are going to be facing in the future. Now, I'm not talking about immediate research and development problems that we have to face immediately, but in the, in the near horizon, yes, we will have to look at how to secure our uh, access from numbers of different places and numbers of different systems that we're no longer considering or not yet considering. Operating the systems are gaining efficiency with more sensors and distributed control systems to uh, allow uh, remote access on a number of different systems. I know Big Nav is, can talk about this as well. This is not just a mobile computing issue. Uh, you have entire sensor systems that you'll be able to access and manipulate that you never dreamed of before uh, when the time when our initial uh, state-of-the-art report was written. So the potential for uh, effect is much, uh, much higher than was ever uh, anticipated. Infrastructure is capital intensive and expensive to operate. SCADA systems are migrating uh, in, in response to that. SCADA systems are becoming much more automated and uh, fewer uh, emphasis or less emphasis on uh, human in the, humans in the loop. That is uh, another trend that we're seeing and, and in fact it's becoming multi-domain. The combination of greater computer power, computing power and reach afforded by linked information systems can therefore expand your influence and your effect, uh, much more so than we ever thought possible. In fact, even uh, botnets now are gaining access to systems we never thought possible. This greater span of control allows fewer personnel to monitor greater and greater uh, domains. Longer, a larger range of control possibilities with fewer personnel. This is driven by the necessity of lowering cost, of course, and is applauded by industry as a whole. Now, the similar dynamic will hold in intellectual property and knowledge management systems. Uh, when we're talking about migrating to cloud storage, more information is now going to be available to more people than would ever have been possible, particularly when you have small and medium-sized businesses able to engage in collaborative enterprises that go well beyond what, uh, what they were able to do before and, and more or less uh, capabilities that were limited to very large uh, industries or very large companies. 
now consortia of small companies can do just as much and go just as far. Government resource constraints. The Budget Control Act, we are, uh, who can tell me whether or not sequestration is finally, uh, excuse me, going to be, there is Juanita. Juanita, are we going off furlough in the near future? Okay, okay. Well, I can't complain too much about that. However, up until today at least, right, you were operating, if you were trying to interface with a government agency, you were pretty much limited to a three-day work week because half of your, half of your uh, um, staff were gone on Mondays, the other half were gone on Fridays. There were three days a week that they actually got to work with each other. Uh, this is, again, a cost-cutting uh, measure that was uh, thrust on us by Congress. Now, we have been trying to find a number of ways to deal with this. Uh, to limit or eliminate excess funding and again adopt cost cutting measures. The uh, DOD budget sustained a $487 billion cut uh, just within Secretary Gates' tenure, and uh, as far as we know, it could reach a trillion dollars in the long haul. Now, I am currently involved in a study for Defense Technical Information Center to design updates to their strategic plan for how they, uh, how they are going to migrate and what capabilities they want to uh, shape themselves to provide. And of course, uh, their long-term strategic plan is going to be driven by what costs, uh, they, what budget constraints they will have and what types of measures they can take to reduce those costs. Uh, inc incidentally, in, in the same time frame, DOD costs for uniform personnel have increased 57% in real terms. Now, so it's clear that just because you're a uniform person doesn't exempt you from the fact that your personnel costs are your, hi are your, your highest costs. So obviously, one of your major points of interest would be reducing manning find whatever measures it takes to reduce uh, personnel manning to carry out your missions. One way uh, is to, in fact, transfer that to contractors. Contractors can resource uh, to the government uh, capabilities at reduced expenses, and you don't have to shoulder the personnel costs. Uh, you don't have to worry about retirement or benefits or any of that nature. So then you therefore transfer the, your responsibility for much of your security to another firm. And uh, there are repercussions of that that have already been, already been addressed today. So even though the US government has direction directives to the contrary, we are still seeing an increase in the use of contracted personnel across the entire spectrum. Contract organizations obviously operate under different sets of incentives uh, from military or uh, civilian DOD or government personnel. The uh, incentive to reduce costs is much higher in the private sector than it would be in DOD. It's just a fact of life. So the DOD is in fact in investing in that reduction in cost by hiring contractors to get the same work done cheaper. Uh, this uh, could potentially reduce resources that should be used for personnel vetting and personnel oversight. And the Snowden case seems to illustrate this. But the jury is still out. Now I'm going to give you some examples of losses, and not all of them are monetary, for uh, lack of due diligence. And these are just going to be some wonderful cases that I'm sure Randy will love to take and, and reuse himself. So the cost of cutting corners with infrastructure. This is taken from industry. Uh, Sony was just recently fined $400,000 by the UK government for failure, for failure to protect uh, personal identifiable information, PII, of their customers. Now this 400, this half a million uh, dollar fine was on top of the 171 million dollar loss 
that they incurred from loss of revenue that they uh, uh, incurred from their network outage. And uh, that also includes all the free games they gave away to their customers in order to make them happy again. Right? So their entire new release of an entire generation of game was given away free uh, to uh, placate their customer base. So that's part of the roll-up of that $171 million in revenue losses. And of course, this, was, this outage was a result of a, a hack into their interactive gaming network. The PII in question was being maintained, uh, maintained on five-year-old servers with out-of-date, unupdated uh, software and uh, no security systems or, or poor security systems on those machines. Uh, unbelievable, but there you go. The cost of that cost-cutting measure was uh, well over $171 million. Okay, another cost for failure in personal reliability. Now, these are some other, uh, some not quite tangible losses. Manning's release of the diplomatic cables in, Wi in WikiLeaks uh, has been stated to have a chilling effect on U.S. diplomatic negotiations and will have a chilling effect for some time to come. Now, how do you quantize that? How do you monetize that? I don't know. Uh, but it's there. Uh, here's one quantifiable piece of information that came out just recently in the course of, the, of Manning's uh, uh, court case. 800, uh, excuse me, 855 man hours were estimated just by the Army to read through all the posted WikiLeaks document. And this is with automated gisting support from computers. So the computers were actually doing keyword search and then telling them what documents to go read. It still took 855 man hours, uh, excuse me, uh, yes, 855 man hours to accomplish that. That um, does not total all the hours that Department of State invested in that and the rest of DOD in that. I was assigned at the time uh, that uh, WikiLeaks broke to the U.S. Embassy in Prague as a science advisor. We took one of our senior staff members there who was a deputy uh, DCO and he spent six weeks reviewing all the WikiLeaks documents without the benefit of computer-aided uh, information search to find any reference to anything that might possibly be embarrassing to the U.S. mission in Prague. So that's just one embassy. So again, that's a, another cost hard to uh, estimate the impact of because this individual was not doing his job uh, uh, during that time as the military uh, liaison. Uh, here's one that just amazed me, and I owe Taz uh, Daltrey this one. An incredible loss. A civilian arsonist cost the Navy $94 million in direct costs for the loss of an attack sub that was eventually just written off by the Navy. This one individual took out an attack sub. Now, he was a welder. He was a disgruntled welder, or let's say a, a psychologically unstable welder, who claimed that he was having a... Uh, anxiety attack on the sub and that he had used up all of his sick leave and couldn't afford to take sick leave. So he figured out another expedient. He set a fire on the sub. He was a welder and started a fire on the sub. It spread uh, quite extensively, caused a huge amount of damage. The Navy finally said it's not cost effective to try and repair all this and they wrote off the ship. That is asymmetric warfare in, in, at its best. Okay, uh, now here's another interesting one for industry. The Information Technology and Inf Innovation Foundation has estimated that uh, Snowden's revelations uh, of the PRISM program could cost U.S. industry, the U.S. IT industry, $35 billion in losses because lack or loss of trust or confidence in their U.S. Uh, software and hardware suppliers. 
a direct cost to the um, U.S. economy of $35 billion. That, I guess, probably takes the cake of, uh, in terms of asymmetric warfare uh, effects. Now, here's one last uh, item I, I also throw out for industry. Uh, two years ago, the Security and Exchange Commission mandated that companies that are publicly traded in the U.S. have to provide a cybersecurity plan of, uh, uh, for evaluation to potential investors and buyers in those companies. Failure to disclose your, uh, let's say, systems and methods for protecting your information or your PII or protecting yourself from the sorts of losses that Sony incurred will, in fact, just as we saw above, result in uh, penalties uh, levied as, as fines by the SEC, just as they just did in the UK. So that could happen here. Another avenue, avenue of costs for failure to execute due diligence. So some implications uh, and policy uh, ideas to think about uh, when we leave today. The risk to intellectual property protection and, inno and innovation. R&D collaboration requires access to information, but greater access also raises a commensurate risk in unwanted disclosure and economic damage uh, to innovative firms, which could, in fact, hamper economic progress and competitiveness of U.S. companies. That is an area that I think uh, we have seen indirectly with uh, recent uh, disputes with the Chinese. Now, some policy responses. Greater resources for personnel vetting and oversight. Well, this is difficult to maintain in economically constrained environments. How do we carry this out? Individual privacy concerns will also impinge on what we do with respect to personnel vetting and oversight. Uh, we can, in fact, institute higher access controls or more stringent access controls, but this cost uh, this has costs on collaborative collaboration efficiencies as well as uh, controls for access to information. Limits of access by any one individual or group. Let's talk about leg. Oh, you're, there you are. Again, what's going to be, how do I estimate our costs on competitive, competitiveness, collaboration? I don't know. I mean... I'm not saying this is a prohibitive cost, but it's got to be part of our, our cost-benefit analysis of what we do. I, I think, though, I think that I really enjoy the leg uh, approach you're taking, and I think that the costs that you would incur with that would be minimal in comparison to some of those expenses we saw um, just before this on the previous slide. Okay, so if we have uh, increased access control or limits of access, this will drive up personnel and oversight costs. So the conclusion from uh, GMU, in a technologi technologically riskier environment, and we talked about how it's going to be technologically riskier in the near future with respect to the proliferation of cloud storage as well as the Internet of Things, we will have to come up with new technological solutions and system responses. Furthermore, and this is where I get to throw in a cognitive uh, flavor, not everything needs to be high tech. Uh, there are concerns that we can look at in terms of less invasive methods of trying to determine me measures of risk for personnel that may not require privacy invasion. I throw that out and, uh, and leave that with you. Uh, but personnel reliability need not always be dependent upon uh, individual invasion of privacy, or in fact, as uh, Bruce talked about, collecting a lot of metadata and then using some anonymous way of filtering through that to identify your personal risk. There may be other methods as well that you can use. Okay, that is the end of the uh, SISIAC GMU brief. And I uh, open the floor to questions. If there are any questions or discussion points, you can use that one, and y'all can use this one. Ideas, comments, questions? Yes, sir.
Could you just follow the uh, background check story a little bit on, on Snowden? What, what could have been done differently in order to prevent him from acting as he did? Well, I am not extremely uh, conversant with the details of the Snowden case. However, uh, it is possible that um, the background checks uh, could have been extended uh, to um, more thorough discussion with previous employers, et cetera, right? And uh, to the best of my knowledge, they were not. So I don't know. Um, now, again, uh, and I'll get, this, get to this in my next brief, uh, the advent of being able to do extensive data mining over big data could have uncover all kinds of things about uh, Snowden uh, that would not come out in a scripted uh, security clearance interview. Uh, to what extent or to what types of, of uh, security access we use those kinds of methods, I don't know, but they are open to us. Uh, particularly if you are looking at open uh, source materials. Anything you post on the internet openly uh, is fair game. So you could in fact do searches as a, cl a collaborative, uh, as a Bayesian input, let's say, to find multiple causes of concern that could be enforcing or reinforcing. Uh, any other questions? Great, thank you Paul, appreciate okay. it very much. Okay. Appreciate it.